Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Dark Souls 3 Lore Through. I'm gonna push the audio up a little bit here. Alright, so we find ourselves back in Arch Dragon Peak. We got here by meditating last time. And we're gonna explore what this whole place is all about. Lots of good uh, upgrade materials and souls here. Um, although, I mean, unless we respec, well, I guess we need to upgrade our. Uh, need to upgrade the uh, this talisman. All right. So these kind of look like, we kind of talked about these guys, that they look like the serpent men. Oops. These guys kind of look like the serpent men. Oh, by the way, I got the last S the shard in the Grand Archives off screen. Uh, they look like the Serpent Men from Sun's Fortress a little bit, and we'll even see a version of the uh, Sorcerers as well, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I should put all this stuff away. But, a wooden shield bearing the image of an ancient dragon very slowly regenerates HP. Yeah, and it does look like the dragon for Nash Lake, actually. The painting is the result of an exquisite but painstaking technique. Lingering, undying traces of the ancient dragons can still be seen in their descendants, the man, the man serpents, though they have fallen far from grace. So yeah, I believe these to be the man serpents from Sun's Fortress. We can hear a bell in the distance. We can see a bell here. Interesting, interestingly enough, that is not the bell that's ringing. Uh, and we have this gate here, which we can open up. Uh, but first, we're gonna not run off the edge. Well. Lots of tight, large titanite and twinkling here. We get the lightning clutch ring, which um, probably doesn't say anything other than about Londor. Yep. Um, and this is a bit of a gimmick boss fight, so I'm just gonna do it and we can talk about stuff later. So lots of stuff to kind of see in here, but we will be taking a look at that. Uh, well, I guess we can look at it right here. Very interesting statue. Um, this guy with a, like a kind of a sword. It's got big flowing hair. We'll meet this guy later. But we can see a bunch of statues honoring him. So yeah, we come across the, um, the so-called ancient wyvern, and uh, as I say, it's a gimmick, so we kind of just, there's no chance of fighting him directly. So we need to kind of run through this arena, and we can fight everything here if we'd like, but I mean, he ends up throwing fire in various places, it's just better to to run through this area. I'm trying not to get hit. I should really dedicate some more stamina. And 
idea this boss just dies with one to the head. That's all you gotta do. Just kind of run off here and then plunge attack and then instantly kills it. It's, you know, it's cool to like have different styles of bosses and such. And you immediately get transported here. Summoned, maybe even. Into this new area. Let's read the Dragon Headstone. Stone imbued with the power of the everlasting dragons, used in secret rite by dragon worshippers. Gain the head of the dragon and emit dragon breath, a transformation that is irreversible until death. Those who chose the path of the dragon strive for a perfect imitation, and the Dragon Head Rite is the first step in this grand process. Evidently, Osiris actually perfected that. Game a dragon. Um, yeah, I guess we'll put this in here. Um, okay. Um, and what we're going to do here, there's this area here, and there's going to be a Drake Blood summoned. But we're just going to go through. fighting him later, but now we're just going to go through the level in reverse. Uh, we've beaten the dragon and kind of cleared up the skies. I got him. Nice. <laughs> Didn't think any of that. Okay. Okay. Okay, no. More Titanite Chunk, I always need those. Uh, 
Not all that important, but we're trying to be thorough. Well, trying to be. Oh, lightning bolts. Again. Um, and there's this ambush that happens here. Um, it's easier to see coming on down here, but you're supposed to try to grab an item right here. that I am as a dumb pie to kind of poke fun at you that you died. I'm trying to get that. And I guess we don't really need to get any of this stuff. I mean, there is only like a few items in this area that are like items. That we can read and stuff. The rest is just upgrade materials. Because again, it, to me, this really functions like a uh, like a DLC type thing. Looks like you should be able to walk up it. And you kind of do, but you can't actually get over there. Yeah, these guys have that ancient dragon shield and the shuttle. So, yeah, we can take a closer look at this. Statue now. It's a huge sword, probably for fighting dragons. Um, yeah, and there's also this twinkling titanite up there. I'm not gonna grab that, you know. He almost looks like he could be Gwyn. There's that crown on front, which looks a lot like Gwyn's crown, and uh, and his hair, you know, is big and billowy like that. But that's not a, that's not Gwyn's weapon. So, I don't know. Yeah, so, yeah, this bell is not the bell being rung. That bell is elsewhere. I don't know exactly the purpose of that bell. Getting some much needed embers here. Probably going to need them for <laughs> the final boss here. Um, hopefully not, but you never know. Ring of Steel Protection. That was the uh, Ring of Night King Rendell in the first one from Baldur. King of the Night, Ring of the Night King of Ancient land, Legend. Um, the Night King was said to be lined with steel on the inside, much that even the talons of mighty dragons did not, did him little harm. I never really read anything about that in the first games. Okay. Let's go back to the dragon shrine thing. And we can now fight this uh, Drake Blood. What's this called, by the way? I can't remember. Dragon Kiln Mausoleum. Okay. Or Dragon Kin Mausoleum. So, yeah, we can come in here and then someone summons a Drake Blood here. He 
these guys can be pretty tough. I mean, I feel like I'm doing pretty decent damage, but like they can be uh, a little bit of a pain to deal with. So we get the Drake Blood Cold so uh, Great Sword, and then the person immediately summons a second. We'll go take up a post. Nope, you will try to attack. We'll get him in a second, uh, but I just wanted to read the Drake Blood Sword. Great sword wielded by an order of knights who venerated dragon blood. This sword, its blade engraved with scripts symbolizing dragon blood, inflicts magic and lightning damage. How we know about the Drake Bloods? They were uh, run by Sir Yorg in Shulva to seek out. Slumbering Dragon. So yeah, here's what I assume is the like the, the other uh, um, what do you call them? man serpents that ha did sorceries and inflamed bridges. Because you he looked like a cobra, which is similar to um, those other guys. All right, so let's fight this guy. Because, um, yeah, it's just gonna be easier if we kill him now and then just clear this area out. Okay. We, we seem pretty equatable when we trade, because he's got lightning too. They don't heal, which is good. And we can get their armor, uh, which we will maybe at the end of the episode. Just depends where where we're at. Um, okay, let's get some stuff over here. Titanite scale. Oh no, we don't really need any of this stuff. Let's say again. This is the elevator right back in the beginning. Um, so I might as well send it down. Alright. So, we see some dragons here, although they look like humans that have turned into dragons via the dragon headstone. Um, are sitting here with. Um, the uh, Path of the Dragon. What is it called? Yeah, Path of the Dragon. Uh, an emote gesture uh, towards this uh, shrine of the dragon here. So, let's do it ourselves. We'll get the Calamity Ring for that. Calamite's Ring. A ring made from the orange eye of a calamitous dragon received double damage. This ring has no useful powers and is merely a symbol of dragon worship, a thing quite quietly passed down amongst its most fervent adherents, some of whom became convinced the task has been bestowed upon them as a sacred duty. Looks like there's some sort of arena in here, and we can see statues of dragons inside that arena. Looks like there's an item over there, and obviously there's an item here. A dragon slayer spear. 
cross spear associated with Ornstein the Dragon Slayer, a weapon of the gods imbued with the strength of lightning. Two-handed thrust utilizes the support of the cross and requires great might, but can pierce deep into the flesh of dragons and send mere men flying. lot of hits, but they're more or less easy to dodge their attacks. As you can see, I uh, just went underneath a lot of those right there. So up here we get the Thunderstone Plate, which um, I'm sure is the same as the other Stone Plates. Yep. Oh, is it? I guess I shouldn't assume that all of these were when I read them, but it says the old summons are granted those who would become dragons. Granted those valiantly face chaos, royal palace guards, granted on an endless journey, granted the undead knights. Okay, so they have a different thing at the end of each of them, but okay. Interesting, there's like a sort of abyss below this. Um, this is a soul. Probably not gonna get it. Because I am just going to run through this area. This looks like Ricard. this bonfire and attempt to fight Ricard, but if I die, I want to die here and not back there. That's 
certainly requires motion. Good idea, we gotta reach. Cards rapier. A strikingly decorative rapier of an undead prince spoken of in ancient stories. Although many of the tales surrounding the prince are questionable, this thrusting weapon suggests that stories of his graceful technique were in fact true. You get that Ricard's lunge and press. Assume a quick stance, lunge forward, and execute a stunning chain of attacks. Sustain offensive with strong attack. Um, I didn't realize you could see them run here. That's pretty cool. Um, now this is the bell that everyone's been ringing. But I will not pull that until we have finished the level. And we're ready to kind of do that area. Now, this is kind of an interesting section. Try my best here. Um, just because there is a summon for this section, and there's no boss. Just to increase our odds of kind of getting the lore here, I'm going to uh, going to wait to summon this for a while. up here. We fight too many of them at once. Yeah, this one guy pauses. Up there, so we can fight this guy. Piece of cake. So there's a summon here, and it's Hawkwood. Now the other time we saw him was um, before um, the uh, Osiris fight, which is kind of interesting. I guess it makes sense because he, he's a, he's in search of something here, and. Um, In order to get here, you need the Path of the Dragon emote, and I guess you get that off of, you know, that, uh, uh, that corpse behind Osiris, that he would have had to fight Osiris in order to be able to get here. But, he comes up to this peak here, comes to the altar, in front of a... Interesting. In front of a extremely large dragon on, on, that takes up an entire mountainside <laughs> across, and he does the path of the dragon in front of it. So of course we have learned our lesson. We know that we should do this as well. And we get the twinkling dragon torso stone. Oops. 
stone imbued with the power of the everlasting dragons offering offered to a towering dragon this stone shows signs of a nation light gain the torso of the dragon and roar alongside an arch dragon mirage the transformation is irreversible until death yet true imitation would will require a dragon head as well so yeah you have the two stones to kind of like the one gives you a dragon head, the one gives you a dragon torso, which is a little bit more involved than the other. Um, than the other uh, games to turn into a dragon. Those are like big crystal lizards almost, but they're not crystal anymore. And up at the top of this ladder, who do we find but our good friend Havel the Rock next to a freshly beaten dragon? Or maybe they're all a bit old. He is tanky. thing I do like about fighting him is that he like he like uses all of his stamina up really easily. So you can uh, when he's guarding you can break his guard and repose on that. Which is nice. He might not do his transformation here. I'm gonna let him do it, just so we can see it. He has a magic that turns him even more into a rock, which is kind of crazy. This won't do that much damage because he's not very cold. But that was sufficient. Dragon Tooth and have a great shield. Created from an everlasting Dragon Tooth that will never break. Left by Havel himself along with his boulder like great shield, grants its wielder resistance to magic and fire. And perseverance. Um, and uh, a tremendously solid and heavy great shield cut straight from the great, great slab of stone. Said to be a relic of the legendary Havel the Rock along with the Dragon Tooth, the shield is imbued with a special power remis reminiscent of Havel himself and it gives you stone flesh. Raise the shield in silent prayer, turning the user's body into a solid mass of stone. Which was uh, demonstrated. We get another Titanite slab. Most of the Titanite slabs in the game are here. And one last item. Tail, which was later interpreted as magic barrier, greatly increases magic damage absorption by covering the body in a strong white protective coating. Said to be a tail of Havel the Rock, an arch enemy of Seek the Scalus. Havel despised magic and was never complacent in preparing means to counter it. So, yeah. Nothing all that new or crazy here, but um, just a lot of reminiscent like Drake Blood, Ricard, Havel, just uh, re uh, going over everything. So let's ring this bell and see what happens.
I suppose Havel would be there if you hadn't killed him. In that, in, in, in the cutscene. So now that has uh, given us access to this uh, area via a storm that we can walk upon. I'm going to try to go with two summons here because you know this is a hard boss. I think, so I said the blue smelter demon was the only boss I haven't beaten in the soul series. And this boss is the only boss that I haven't beaten solo. Okay. He's dressed like the, uh, the boss we're gonna beat, so he clearly has done this before. Um... I guess we'll see what uh, if we can grab another one of these guys. Otherwise, we can just try it with Raiden. Pretty sure we grabbed at least one of those guys. I don't know. There. Franz Kafka. Sorry, Raiden, you're gonna have to wait. There we go. Come on, Franz. Apologize to these guys that were gonna watch the cutscenes in the middle here. Sunlight Spirit and it looks like Gwyn. This is kind of interesting. And I really like this cutscene because it's similar to uh, Orange Steam and Schmoll. Puts his hand over the fallen drake or the dragon, the wyvern. And I guess it's like fully dead or something, but then anyway, he stabs it and kind of absorbs the Dragon's power, just the way that Orange Team did to Small and vice versa, depending on who you killed first. But now we face this guy, the Nameless King. Grabs Gwen. Like lightning is not going to be much better. 
against this guy. the nameless king. <laughs> Raiden waited all that time for me to summon someone else and then he dies like five minutes into the fight, two minutes into the fight. go. Thanks, Kafka. We put him down in the grave. Alright. Before we get into this Nameless King stuff, let's grab everything else. First off, another slab, and we saw this item from the other side of this. You can see everyone's blood stains in the air. Um, we got the Dragon Slayer spear from the other side of this door, which is now open, and we saw this item, which is the Dragon Slayer set. So what is going on here? What exactly is this all about? Well... I mean, maybe you've... If you don't know already and you are watching this as a first time thing, you might be putting it together now. Soul the Nameless King. The Nameless King was once a dragon-slaying god of war, before he sacrificed everything to ally himself with the ancient dragons. So, right there, god of war. Um, that would be Gwyn's firstborn. Dragon-slaying god of war. We know that the firstborn had did something, well, long after Gwyn kind of left, um, the Firstborn did something that the royal family did not like, or potentially, I don't know, other gods didn't like, and uh, they removed his name from the annals of history, and they removed his statues everywhere in Anorlando, and they removed the Warriors of Sunlight statue, which is his statue. And we 
we were saying, like, the weapon, and that looks like Ornstein's weapon. And, of course, if you look at the weapon that he's using, it looks like that, but there's just a sword there that, it ha if that breaks off, it looks like Ornstein's spear. <clears throat> and, of course, he's called the Nameless King because he is nameless because his name was removed from the annals of history. So it's a nice little thing um, there. And we're going to read his stuff um, in a second here. So, but let's read the... Um, Golden Lion Helm associated with Dragon Slayer Ornstein from the Age of the Gods and imbued with the strength of lightning. In the Dragonless Age, this knight, who long guarded the ruined cathedral, left the land in search of the nameless king. Undoubtedly a friend and compatriot of his. So, yeah. So the, so the answer is, it has been answered. It is not Solaire. A lot of people think Solaire was the firstborn, although it's totally understandable that one would think that. Um, okay, so we have a couple things to do. Um, and we're going to try to get them all taken care of. So let's just go to Firelink Shrine. Do a couple things there. I mean, we should probably... Uh, Ah, well met. Did I miss the dragon catcher's ashes? Oops. Yeah. Okay, well I will uh I'll just do everything here and we can take that care of that in the next episode. Alright, so what oh, name was King? Lightning Storm, Miracle of the Nameless King, allied to the Ancient Dragons. And I didn't talk about that but in great depth, but we should. Once a slayer of dragons, the former king and war god tamed a storm drake on which he, he led a lifetime of battle. This miracle is likely a tale of their bond. Let's read the uh, other thing. A curved sword imbued with the strength of the Storm Drake. The Nameless King, ally of the ancient dragons, fought beside the Storm Drake in countless battles. When the great beast fell, the king claimed his soul, and was the cust as was the custom in the Age of the Gods. So that's another thing about what happened with Ornstein. You know, Ornstein of all people too, <laughs> you know, and Smo. You know, it was custom in the Age of Gods that a fallen comrade, you absorbed their soul. And then here it is, his sword spear. Again, if you had removed all the spe the sword part of it, it just is the, the dragon slayer spear. A dragon hunting weapon from the age of the gods, the earliest form of the cross spear, serving as both sword and spear. Its owner was the nameless king and deific hunter of dragons. The sword spear is imbued with the lightning, of which he was the heir, which we knew. Gwyn gave that to him. Of course, why would he give that to him if he banned him from the annals, another evidence that he had nothing to do with that. Okay, so the thing that we should talk about, I mean, I haven't made it explicitly clear yet, is that um, the thing that he did that got him banned from the annals of history and from Manilando is ally with the dragons, of course. Um, that's probably the greatest sin that you could do um, in a age that fights the dragons as their only enemy. It's like marrying a Nazi if your family went through the Holocaust, I guess, in the sense that, you know, I mean, they're sworn enemies, um, and they become friends, so it makes sense that he gets removed from the annals of history. And again, that, that parallels something with Guinevere. If she did not like what Osiris was doing by becoming a dragon himself and bearing a child of dragons, um, 
Although we can't fully confirm that. He just says that, and we don't see the baby, so who knows. Of course she would be upset with that and wants to leave, because that is a big deal for her. And I think having lost her brother and obviously the, what happened with her father, I mean, it would be understandable that she would be, that would be anathema. Um, let's see if she does sell anything, um, though, that... Uh, Yeah, so she does sell this stuff. Crown of the of a nameless king who was allied to the ancient dragons. This golden crown, buried amidst long strands of bristling ash, is said to closely resemble that of the first lord. Yeah, I mean it looks like his um, his crown. Dragon scales are razor sharp and cannot be burned. These golden bracelets, together with the golden breastplate and and crown are said to closely resemble those of the first lord and there we go so now they do have the Faram who is named after the god of war so perhaps that guy's name is Faram but there is no in-game evidence of that so we will leave that alone uh, we have a ton of places to go here oh whole reason I wanted to come back here. Well, I should also level up. And I should definitely get it to endurance. Okay. Because I feel good with everything else. But, interestingly enough... Oh, you've returned. I was hoping to see you. That crestfallen ass Hogwood, he handed me this. He's changed a great deal since he left this place. Graven of face, he asked me to give it ye. Hawkwood sword grass. Well, now that that task is concluded, what would you have me smith today? Well, we might as well have you smith this. Pretty be careful. <laughs> Alright. So the first place we want to go is to Lothric. Uh, oh, is it? Yeah, it's in the high wall of Lothric, I guess. We want to go to Osiris. And this is good that this is the case because this is actually providing me a amendment on something I said previous. Or attraction of a lore point that I said. So obviously here beside behind Osiris we can definitely see these uh, man serpents as we just fought. Especially this one with the cave. Is that the second time he did that to me? I feel like he did that in the first Anyway, so now that we come back and we've beaten that Drake Blood, we get the Drake Blood set. And that now makes more sense. That guy looks much more like a Drake Blood than a Lothric Knight. So, um, that's a good correction on that. Oh, let's read this. Armor of the Drake Blood Knights, worshippers of the blood of dragons. The red cloth is said to symbolize their yearning for blood. Dragon worship has captured the hearts and minds of warriors across the lands for many ages. Perhaps such warriors are attracted to doctrines of few words. That makes sense. That, um... The simpler the path to enlightenment, the more people want to attain it. not based on heady knowledge, then uh, it might be uh, desirable to the masses. <laughs> However, we see that it really works. <laughs> so we come back here to where we killed the stray demon. 
Oh, and we also have to read the uh, Hawkwood Swordgrass. We'll just do that. So it's similar, obviously, to the uh, the Wolf's Blood Swordgrass, which is the Watchdog of Farron's um, covenant item. But this one says, Blood-stained Swordgrass of Hawkwood, deserter of the Undead Legion. Traditionally, the Undead Legion of Farron sends the gravest of messages using Swordgrass. Come to the mausoleum in Farron. Only one can take the path of ancient dragons. Dude, I helped you, so you should be grateful. Well, we can see there's a new item here. It's Havel set. Armor as if hewn from a giant boulder. Highly protective but excessively heavy, the warriors who followed Havel the Rock never flinched nor retreated from battle, crushing any foe that stood in their way. Yeah. So the mausoleum in Farron, well that's where we fought the uh, Abyss Watchers. So let us go there. I typically die in this fight quite a bit, but we'll see. There he is. Decided to stop running from my Is that really quiet or something? Loathe me all you like. I shall take what makes you dragon. Man, that's one of the reasons I do so badly at this. Is he uh Dragon Headstone. Stone imbued with the power of the everlasting dragons, the second of its kind, offered to a towering dragon. Gain the head of a dragon and emit breath alongside an arch dragon mirage. The transformation is irreversible. The illusion achieved was the first case of a human imitating the form of an ancient dragon, and it revealed the smallness of human existence. The road to the old dragons is long and arduous, and only one can complete the journey. Aha. Uh -huh. So there's also a regular dragon torso stone. I wonder where we get that. I'll have to look that up. Or maybe there isn't. Um, so that's that. I believe that's everything. So that's the Arch Dragon Peak, and I guess technically that's the last content in the base game, besides the final boss. Uh, next time we will be um, we will be taking on the uh, painting that we found, and we'll start talking about all of what that means, and some stuff we we'll might have to refer back to the first. Um, to the Cathedral uh, of the Deep episode where we actually met someone. Uh, but we'll talk about that all next time. So um, thanks for watching, and um, I'll see you next time. Bye.